Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Kiki Sparkles. Hello. And we've got some big Disney news. First thing this morning, apparently George Lucas put out a statement saying that he is backing Bob Iger and the current Disney board. It must be opposite day. Yeah, we're going to talk about this because this is in direct uh, opposition of, of things he has said about Disney in the past. In fact, on numerous occasions, he said he was not happy with how Disney was handling Star Wars. He felt lied to, betrayed, called them white slavers. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about this. And the statement, I got to tell you, it does not sound like it was written by George Lucas himself. It sounds like it came from his office or something. It's very, I don't know. It just, it doesn't but sound like George Lucas. This is how desperate Iger and the board is to keep them in play. My nice thing, again, what difference does it effing make if one of the activist investor groups gets a couple seats on the board when the majority of the board is still made up with the people that, that are his people? But because he's so worried about losing one or two seats on the board, they are pulling out all these stops. Why are they so worried about that? Like, why are they so worried about oversight and being asked to be accountable? It's very, very weird. Like, I don't get it at all. And like, if they don't like Pelt, Rizzullo makes no sense to be mad about him. So, it, and then they're talking shit. They're doing these like politically style, styled ads that are just like not in Disney's, you know, how way Disney behaves normally publicly either. It's just really, really weird. And it smacks of desperation. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this. I, I was completely surprised, but George Lucas does have a lot of shares of Disney. I think that was part of his deal. And um, I don't know, guys. We'll see what happens. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. You'll get woohoo if you do. Woohoo! Now, if this is actually George Lucas himself, and he doesn't have a blaster being held to his head. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking this might have something to do with Kathleen Kennedy because he, he is the one who put Kathleen Kennedy in charge. Yeah, but they've also said it before about, it's been teased before about bringing him back and he's been back to the Star Wars sets and stuff before. And I don't know if he, maybe they're promising he'll come back for something. I don't I mean, know. Personally, Disney fucking ruined Star Wars. I'm oh, sorry. They, they absolutely did. Other than the yeah. Mandalorian and they killed that too. Yeah. They have not, it, it's gone off a cliff. Like you have fundamentally misunderstood and ruined most everything about it. Like everything that George Lucas built, you completely undid in the, in the first couple episodes of your sequel tril trilogy. And he was pissed, called you all kinds of names. Yes. He kept saying that that is not his Star Wars. Yeah, uh, let's remember back so it's in weird. Yep, back in uh, 2015, 2016, he said that uh, Disney were white slavers. He sold Star Wars to white slavers. Um, Bob Iger in his book said that he knew George Lucas felt betrayed and upset with him because he misled him. He misled him, and every time you'd see photos of him at Disney or whatever, George Lucas at Disney, he looked like he just did not want to be there. And then more recently. The, this uh, drama at this school, they were doing like a, a Zoom call with this this one school and a kid asked him about Finn and he was like, that set him off and you could tell his wife was like, oh God, George, just stop talking. But he was basically like, yeah, well, my Star Wars was, was those six movies and what they're doing now, I don't have any input into and... You know, but I, I told my story in in, in six movies. You and know? you told your story, which, you know, has an audience and is still being celebrated. And Disney told their story, which completely undid everything George Lucas did. Yes. And they, everything is diminishing returns constantly. And I love this because suppose, suppose it occurred a headline, creating magic is not for amateurs. But Disney hasn't been creating much magic for a while now. That is the problem. People yeah. that are in charge at Disney are not the ones who create the magic. You you kind of like handcuff those people so they couldn't do what they needed to do or got rid of them or they went other places because they were forced out. I just, I don't even have force. I don't even know what Lucas is thinking, but I know Disney is damn desperate. Yeah, they said there's a disturbance in the force. This is coming from the, uh, the Hollywood Reporter article. And George Lucas wants to help correct the problem. Uh-huh. They promised him he could come back in or do something. The Star Wars and Indiana Jones filmmaker. Oh, they ruined Indiana Jones they, too. They ruined that too. That was one of their biggest, uh, their biggest uh, money losers. He said uh, he's weighing in on the Walt Disney Company's ongoing proxy fight with activist investors. He's throwing his support behind Bob Iger and Disney's board. Because we keep saying Bob Iger and Disney's board, but Bob Iger wasn't up for debate about being removed. No, they keep doing that. They keep no, I think he it. knows he will be though. I think well, he has to be that he was only supposed to be there.
there two years and they extended it to four, but he has to be replaced either way. Like he's out no matter what. He's but Palpatine. They, he's not going anywhere. But they keep <laughs> no, he'll go out, I think, but it's making sure somebody that's his puppet will stay behind. Yeah. But like, because that's the people, the people that they're they're looking at that are the four people that are possibly in running for his position are all internal people who are people that, you know, Bob Iger likes. <sighs> All right. So he said, creating magic is not for amateurs. <laughs> when I sold Lucasfilm just over a decade ago, I was delighted to become a Disney shareholder because of my longtime admiration for its iconic brand and Bob Iger's leadership. Again, let's just uh, reiterate, George Lucas felt betrayed. That, and he uh, called them white slavers. He called them white slavers. You know, I don't know. Uh, when Bob recently returned to the company during a difficult time, I was relieved. No you one knows. You're mad at Bob. Yeah, you were mad at Bob. No one knows Disney better. This sounds like something Bob Iger himself would have written. No one knows Disney better, but Bob Iger and crew, the, the, the problems that are affecting the stock now, the problems that are hurting the Disney company now and making it that they have had to make so many cuts and changes were directly related to choices that Bob Iger made. I, I want to remind you all about that. He's the one who took away free parking. It was nickel and dying people and going yep. after the whales. He is the one who kept raising ticket prices exponentially and, and did the huge increases on annual pass holders. That was him. He's the one who overspent and qu acquiring things instead of creating things. And then after the plans ran out at Lucasfilm or at, you know, Marvel, um, they are thought, well, he's the one that's very politically charged and then thought it was a good idea to go down the politically charged path moving forward. He's the one who was behind the race bends, you know, gender swaps, et cetera, et cetera. And he's the one who overpaid for Fox Massley that screwed the company in the first place. Yeah. I want to remind you all. But yes, continue. He said, I remain a significant shareholder because I have full faith and confidence in the power of Disney and Bob's track record of driving long-term value. I voted all of my shares for Disney's 12 directors and urge other shareholders to do the same. Why would Disney be bringing this out unless they thought there was a real threat? Well, because this is right after they put out the uh, paper saying that they made $12 billion off of Star yeah, Wars. I, I don't think that's I don't the believe case. That. I think I, they made their money back. I'm not going to lie. I think yeah, they I did. think they made their money back at this but point. But. I think they probably, if they made that lot, a lot of money, they're, they said they're not counting theme park issues, like tickets and stuff in that. I, I, I don't buy it. I think that merchandising with Baby Yoda, stuff like that, you know, Grogu had a lot of the money they made. Yes. They are counting merchandise into that. But they said they aren't counting theme parks. And if you would take a percentage of every ticket sold, even if people don't go to Galaxy's Edge, um, then maybe you might hit $12 billion. Uh, But I, I do not believe that is accurate. I think that's a Hollywood counting. Again, the original Star Wars films never made enough profit to pay David Prowse. So, yeah, right. Um, so that would have been that would have been uh, George Lucas. So that would have been under George Lucas. That would have been Fox, which Fox I heard notoriously was was cheap. Like Fox was actually their their bean counters were pretty aggressive. But yeah, so it's coming right after this accounting thing. It's coming right after they got the support of Abigail Disney, who has been incredibly critical, so critical yeah. of Disney. She she made a whole movie about how awful they were. Right. And complained about Bob Iger's salary yeah. and called um, Walt Disney a fascist. Yes. And now she's like, Bob, uh, Bob's away. Disney's, we need to save Disney. They w w What are they paying these people? They're promising or paying them something because they're coming out of the woodwork. And these people who have been vocal, vocally against Bob Iger and Disney for years. Yeah, it's it's very weird because here's the thing. Uh, Disney would not be in the position they're in right now if it wasn't for Bob Iger's leadership. And yeah, you can say Chapek. Well, one, he appointed Chapek. And two, he never actually left. And three, Chapek wasn't there long enough to do any long-term damage. Well, then there was cases where situations where he needed Bob Iger's help. Bob Iger, according to that that one article that about the people behind the scenes, yeah. let him, let him uh, hung him out to dry. You know, because his ego was more important than the company that he now claims is the most important thing to him ever. Yes. Uh, so they said it's not clear how much Disney stock Lucas actually owns because Perlmutter's got a ton from when they bought Marvel. But when the company acquired Lucasfilm for four billion, the deal included about yeah about half of that in stock, one point eight billion in stock. Marvel was also acquired for about four billion dollars. So it might be that he actually has almost as many shares as as Perlmutter. You know, um, so, they had to promise him something. I don't know. I, I mean, still love that these people know the magic. I'm like, 
They don't. That's the problem. All Bob Iger does is is he's very good at talking in circles. He's very good at being charming. And he's very good at buying shit that he didn't create and flushing it down the toilet. Also, live action remakes of everything, that was under Bob Iger, too. Yeah, what's what's weird about this is that Iger is acting as if... He is Disney? He is Disney. And he's having these people say that, too. And he's acting as if he definitely, positively, definitely is going to get replaced. It, like, like it shouldn't bother him that much to have two board members, especially one That's of them being it's this weird. former CFO who knows Disney almost as well as Bob Iger does. You know, so it's not like he just walked in off the street. I mean, I can see them being concerned about pelts, but Rizzullo, I think it's because Bob Iger knows there's going to be accountability. They're going to push hard to uh, have him name a successor and they might not like his choice of successor. They might want somebody that's a little more well, in line people, with the stockholders. The four know? people that are going to be brought in as, as potential, that are supposedly being looked into. I covered this a few days ago. There are four candidates that are top contenders to replace uh, Bob Iger and they're all internal candidates. Okay. And apparently they each one are, are taking turns going around with Bob so he could tell them how he does things. Now, if you remember when we talked about that thing with Chapek and it was like the people behind the scenes, you know, spilling the tea, Bob Iger was really pissed off that Chapek wouldn't do things his way. Yeah. So he's trying to find people that will. So the people that, you know, now Dana Walden came in with Fox, but most other people have been there for years at the company. So the ones he's looking into, if you scroll down, um, Data Walden, she's co-chairman of Disney Entertainment. She runs like the streaming Hulu TV side of it. Well, she was the one who was pushing for more DEI yes. stuff. And she was like, yeah, we passed on sitcoms yes. because they were too white. That was her. Like th this would have been a huge hit, but we passed on it because of the, the racial makeup of the main cast. Yes. As says the white it. woman. Yes. Says the white woman. Yes. Um, so go down. Uh, then they have Alan Bergman, who's the other co-chair of Disney Entertainment. He handles the, the, the movie side. He actually is on the Motion Picture Association Board of Directors representing Disney directly. He might be okay. Josh Tomorrow, uh, of course, Parks. They probably won't go with Josh Tomorrow because they He's went too with... too nice. Well, that and they went with uh, Chapek last time he was from Parks. Yeah. Um, people like Tomorrow, but he's been there for years and they probably won't go with him. And then the other one is the chairman of ESPN and sports content, Jimmy Pitaro. Why? Now, he actually... Well, he actually came... There, there'd be a reason. He's there as chairman of ESPN. He's only been there for a little bit, but he actually came in through interactive media. He was co-president of Disney Interactive, and they're trying to make these deals with Fortnite and shit. They're oh, trying to no. go the way of the digital stuff and oh, with, the, no. with AI and the and the you know different virtual reality crap and all that stuff. They, so that's probably why he's in the running. They put him in. It's going to be like Chris Cox at Hasbro, where he's going to try to turn everything into a video game, everything into a virtual experience. Mm -hmm. That would be a bad move. However, I do think if they would make a virtual version of Disney World that was very close to being walking down or Disneyland or the different Disney parks, so you could visit them virtually and ride the attractions virtually, and they charge a fee for it, they would make a shit ton of money. Yeah, but nobody but, go to the parks because they'd be like, well, this is a much better experience. But they keep saying that of the people that can go to the parks that they that they don't go because they can't afford it. So they yeah. make it a much more affordable for people who would not be able to attend otherwise. You know? Mm. Do like a little box that comes, you, you do a subscription, and every month you get a box of Disney Parks merch or something too. Oh or my Disney God. treats or things go with it so you feel like you're there. You know? They, oh. And they make a, they make a shit ton of money, but they won't do that for. It's like reason. Ready Player One with with Mickey Mouse. You Actually, have to sing. it would it would be interesting if you could pick the year. If you could, if you could, saying, if you could bring back the extinct attractions. If you could bring back the extinct attractions, if you could go to Disneyland on opening day, well, that would be interesting. Again, was Epcot 1982. Yeah. If you go to them on Facebook, they just did a they just did a, a walk like a ride through of uh, World of Motion. Oh, now, yeah, you're watching. It was that, yeah. very cool. It was pretty close. Yeah. Had the sounds. I mean, you could tell some of them are like, clipped photos and stuff. But it it was, if you want to know what World of Motion was like, they have it. I can't wait till they finish Journey to Imagination. That's the one I want to see. Yeah, that's a trap. Anyway, I digress. Anyway. So these are the four people that are supposedly at the forefront. And they're all internal candidates that Bob Iger feels he can control. They're Iger's people. They're on his side. They kiss his ass. Well, that that's the thing. So Iger can't let go. So no, he whoever, didn't let go last time. Yeah, whoever he puts in charge, he's going to be the puppet master. But mm -hmm. you know, he's this is basically this is Palpatine picking his Darth Vader. Basically, you know. But George Lucas, who who you know was livid about, and and Bob Iger, you know, flat out was candid about in his book how 
George was upset and betrayed when they basically told him one thing and did something else. Yeah. And now all of a sudden George Lucas and he just just complained about him just a couple of years ago, called him you know white slavers back in 2015. Now all of a sudden he's oh he's on their side. Vote Bob, guys. Bob who stabbed in the back. It doesn't sound and, like him. Well, he it, they put it out. So yeah. whoever wrote it, what's he getting for it? Because there's something fishy going on. But as far as Disney Magic's concerned, Disney under Bob Iger has been acquisitions of other companies, Star Wars, Marvel, Pixar, uh, Fox. It's been a lot of spending on other things. You don't get it. You got some good movies out of these companies, but for the most part, when they tra- it's been live action reimaginings. It's been cheap ass yeah. stuff at the theme parks. It take years to, and then when they do have a new ride, that's cool. It's a clone of something else, and it takes years to put in. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is its own thing, and it's worth it. But Ratatouille, clone. Tron coaster, clone. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking back to Star Wars, though. Like, the biggest thing they have going for them is the Alkalite. And it's getting roasted all over the internet. The poster was pretty awful. Like, I can't believe that George Lucas is on board with this. Like, I don't uh, know. Well, Abigail Disney, who who's always complaining about Bob Iger, is like, we need to we need to keep Iger and the board members on. Again, the board members who don't have jack shit in stock. They step. They threw. Iger. They threw his treatment for episode seven, eight, nine out. And I think that that you know, even if you didn't like the prequels, I think at least George's basic story with the prequels was solid. And I think that they could have made three solid movies out of his treatment for the the sequels. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and they that, gave it a treatment, all right. Yeah, they did, and he was he was betrayed by them. And it like the, the sequel trilogy made no damn sense. It set the saga up for failure, and people aren't going to remember Star Wars as being this massive cultural thing. They're going to remember it as being just another science fiction franchise on TV, on streaming, and the toys are rotten on the shelves, and nobody gives a shit. It has no cultural relevance anymore. And that that was Disney's doing. He could have George Lucas could have left on a high note and just been like, yeah, there's never going to be any more Star Wars. Um, I made my Star Wars. It was a cultural phenomenon. It, it's rarefied air. There's not going to be any more. Um, and everybody's going to go back to these. Yeah, but original- then he wouldn't have made a lot of money selling it to Disney. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't need the money. But the flip side is, too, I think the reason he sold it to Disney was because he kept getting shit on by the fans. That is too. true. That is true. I remember that. They had, like, the People versus George Lucas and all that crap. I remember, I remember a certain uh, Masters of the Universe showrunner that was heavily involved in constantly taking a shit on George Lucas oh, uh, yeah. at every opportunity it, It's okay had. when Kevin Smith does it, but yes. if we do it, we're terrible people. Yes. yes. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, and that was that was a big a big thing for him was he was like, yeah, I'll just let somebody else deal with it because I, I don't want to do it anymore. I mean, I can't blame him after a while. It was getting annoying. But then he also thought he was handing over to Disney, which he had a relationship for years, thought yeah. they were going to do what he asked and they were going to honor what he, he put out. And it's then they Disney. Of course they're not. Of they course they're not. They just put out. They don't care what's put out. So here we are. So I don't know, guys. I don't know if this is actually George. Like I said. Uh, hey, well, they came from him. So I'm sure he didn't like that. Someone didn't do it without his permission. Yeah. I, I think what, what Iger is afraid of is if Pelts and Rizzullo get in there, they're going to change everybody else's minds. I just and see board stuff shift all the time and you don't see it go this far. No. Like, this is crazy. And if you're if, if, it, if only two, two seats doesn't make a difference, then what difference does it make? Then why are you flipping out? Because Pelts and Rizzullo could sway the other board members to not listen to Bob Iger. Well, if they were smart, they wouldn't listen to Bob Iger. Yeah. Because right? that's how the company got in the position. That's got into. how the company got in this position. It was your glorious leader, Bob Iger, who even when Chapek was in charge, Bob Iger was still in charge. So. It's just weird. Everything is it's, it's for two board seats that aren't even Iger's. And he's the one that's like, you know, because he acts like, oh, oh, oh this can't happen because of me. But if you're leaving anyway, what difference does it make? I, I think I, I still think he is afraid that Jay Rizzullo is going to take his job. I mean, they're I saying Jay, that Jay Rizzullo doesn't want his job. Uh, well, maybe publicly he doesn't, but he might be like, well, you know, now that I'm here, so. now that I'm here, I did always have my eye on that. But uh, yeah, I don't know, guys. I think it's just I think it's just he is a control freak. Bob Iger thinks he is Disney. He's a control Even freak. Even when he's gone, he's going to run it. Yeah, and that's what I think what he's that is what he's afraid of is that whoever is next will not answer to him. It'll be somebody else that'll do things differently. And it might be that they do things in a much better way. Like I would love to see like John Lasseter or somebody put in. That would be the ultimate F you, wouldn't it? 
Like, last year gets gone for nebulous reasons. Like, we don't even know exactly what happened, and they just kind of left him finish out his contract, and then he comes back. He's like, yep, guess who's in charge now, bitches? I I'm in charge. I think you're really reaching, baby. I love you, but you're really reaching on some of this. Anyway. I think I think he would I think he would do okay. I think he would do good as a, a chief creative officer, but not as not as a CEO. He doesn't seem like he has the business sense. Anyway, we gotta wrap this up. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.